Jonathan Liebsman is really what attracted me to the project in the first place, his, his ideas right from the outset. Because uh, truth be told, I read it and I was like, oh man, I'm not entirely sure. Because on the page, he was a very 2D sort of say the wrong thing at the wrong time kind of character. And um, when, when I met Jonathan, I said, look, that's not what I want to do with it. I want to do this with it and what ends up in the film with it. And um, uh, thankfully, Sam was on board with that, and we really worked together a great deal to sort of promote that character. But you know, what keeps me in that realm is that beard. You know, when you, when you grow something like that, <laughs> no one else wants to touch. I was hailing cabs in London like, oh, I have money, oh, please. Well, I think maybe I was slightly fluky with it because I was new and Jonathan was new. So I think maybe there was a part of it that linked us that was like, we're both new, let's go in there and pretend we're a really solid team. But actually we were, we, we became that. And, you know, I think it's very nerve wracking. Jonathan's a young director, if you think about it, um, and is trying to make a name for himself. And he's dealing with, with Ray Fiennes and Bill Nye and Liam Neeson and Sam Worthington. And, you know, his nerves were right at the peak. Um, but, uh, you know, the fact that those guys are professionals, the fact that they're veterans, some of them, I think, eased him into it greatly. So that when I had an idea, the preparation I do at home, I don't rely on the director to go, so, so in this scene, what am I doing? You know, I do a lot. And Jonathan's very good at spotting a good idea. So, um, yeah, you, you have to work and support all these people. You're not just there to be like, well, wait a minute. I, I Things like the navigator, you know, so, so taking it incredibly seriously that I am the navigator or, or, or Aginor's the, the navigator um, and, and, you know, a few quips, a few lines. Whereas before he was like, when, when there's a scene with Bill Nye and the Queen and, and Perseus, we're all sitting there talking about the gods and the end of the world. I asked for a slice of cake and it was like, eh, it's funny to my, to my child, you know, second cousin, but not very funny to the adults. And I think what makes film's fun is when the adults go there and they, and they enjoy it also. I wasn't, I, now I can, but at the time I was sort of going through a bit of that myself. I was thinking, geez, I think I have a couple of these issues. So it was nice to create a journey for Aginor that at the beginning when he's shunning one half of himself, i.e. The, the godly side and the gods, um, you know, it, his journey was to, to complete himself as a person and embrace all that he is. You know, so it was, a, it, it was I didn't talk about that on set because it doesn't make for fun, light-hearted conversation, but you know, it was, um, it was where I was trying to go with that character. He is greatly involved. I think he was greatly involved last time. I just think people sort of, he has great ideas. And, you know, being an Englishman, being an Australian, being a South African, sometimes we say things at volume. It doesn't make the, the, the idea any less good. Um, so, you know, there were a couple of times when we were shouting and then we realised we were all saying the same thing. So we just got on with doing it, you know, and sort of looked around, made sure no one was looking. <laughs> Well, the, the sort of looking around at the end, embarrassed that we were all shouting so loudly at each other, was to glance over at poor Rosman, who's sitting there reading a book, you know, eating an apple, and you're like, oh, poor Rosman, sorry, Rosman. She's in a tent, she's fine, she doesn't really care. So she comes in, does her stuff. So as delicate as she is, yeah, she gets on with yeah. all the tough stuff. I enjoyed... Um, um, being hoist upside down, I'm being, uh, being hoisted into the air also. So I had a lot of good fun times, you know. Um, fighting with Sam, figuring out, you know, in the middle of a dusty hill in uh, Tenerife, throwing a trident to one another successively over and over, you know. We patted ourselves on the back quite heavily when we achieved that. <laughs> You have it's 14 hours a day. You have, and that's, you know, plus makeup and hair. You have no time to sort of like have to do all these things to unwind. It is very simple to go to sleep. You, you're knackered, so <laughs> you want to sleep. But after the shoot, 
how I came down from it was I had to shear my face like a sheep, you know, the, the hair sort of fell forward and hung. So I had this big, like, uh, <laughs> it was horrendous. I think that refers to the hideous grazes we got while sleeping about in the sand and pretending that Ares had blown us back with his mighty power or, you know, the wall had come quickly, uh, more quickly than we expected. Um, yeah, I think that's the same. I did experience it. I experienced it in a sort of 12, 12 and a half inches along the backside of my thigh. Yeah. I think, you know, if you read mythology, you know, the beauty of the demigods is really they have the mix. They have the, you know, the archetypes of the gods. They have, you know, the, the human nature. Um, so, yeah, they're just a very uh, evocative character to play. So it was, um, uh, you know, it's nice that we saved the day. There was a moment there where I might not have saved the day. So I'm glad I do in the end. I like the Cyclops because I like um, the, the tale of Odysseus, you know, I like that, that story and the story of the Cyclops is in there. I won't spoil it for anyone, you know, I'll spoil the film all day long, but, but that's uh, it's a great book to read and, and when he encounters the Cyclopses, that's uh, it's great. So I was, I was privileged to, to also encounter them.